Hello, and welcome to this edition of Represent NYC on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. My name is Brian Benjamin, and I'm the chair of Manhattan Community Board 10, which encompasses Central Harlem. My guests today are the Honorable Hazel Dukes. Hazel is the president of New York NAACP. My second guest is Aisha Sekou. Aisha is the founder of Street Corner Resources. Today, we will talk about the role of community and civic activism in our city and our country. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having let me. Let me start with this. Um, there's so much going on in the world right now, and people are confused, they're concerned, um, and one of the things that I thought would be helpful would be to bring out two activists, legendary activists like yourselves, just to talk about how do people get involved and be a part of the process and make a difference. And so let me start with you, Hazel. If, if you can, talk a little bit about your background. How did you get started um, in, in civic activism? And, um, and, and, and just kind of walk us through your background and what you've been up to. Well, I'm a Southern by birth. Okay. Born in Montgomery, Alabama, which have much history. Uh, one of the things that people don't know about me that Miss Rosa Parks was my Sunday school teacher. And also she was secretary of the NAACP. So in the South, you start off with family, the church, and the community. So I came uh, when my dad moved and uh, my parents moved to New York. I already had a foundation there. On my freshman year, I went back to Alabama State, which is my family tradition of school. It's Alabama State University now, but it was the Alabama State Teachers College. And so my families are all teachers, mm -hmm. uh, men and women on both sides. And so I had a Deaf or understanding, my father also was a Pullman porter. Mm. Uh, I saw E.D. Nixon as a child, and I saw Mr. Randolph as a child. That's how we came north, by my father being, I rode on a train, that I was behind the curtain. Mm. My dad had to wait in the uh, room, waiting room with the whites. Mm. And so I, it was ingrained in me at Alabama State, uh, all black school, segregation was there. Uh, a young man came to Alabama State about voter registration, and he said something that really struck with me. He said, now don't let anyone tell you you shouldn't be involved in politics and be involved in your community. He said, because two things happen to you. When you're born, you get a birth certificate, and when you die, you get a death certificate. Mm. And someone write both of those, <laughs> whether they are appointed or elected. Right. And then he went on to be much plainer about talking about your electric bill and your water bill. And so that kind of got to me. And as my mother said, I was my daddy's child anyway. I, all, I was nosy. I wanted to know what people was talking about. Now, remember, I was there when my mom and dad had to go to the front of the bus mm -hmm. to give their nickel if a white was sitting on the seat, we had to go through the back door. I do know that I could not eat at the counter at Crest and Woodward, mm -hmm. which was the main area. So all of that was inbred in me, but I didn't know how to explain it as a child. I didn't know what was bothering me inside. But as I got old and heard the conversations and looked at what was hap happening, TV wasn't the real thing then, but it was conversation at church, it was conversation at the dining room table with my dad and his friends talking about what they was going to do and how they was going to do it. I learned that you have to have a vision, a plan, and strategies. And you have to be consistent with all of those. You can't be today something and by even that afternoon you're something else and the next day you're something else. That was not the way they planned their movement and made it successful. And when young people and middle-aged people and older people say they don't know where to go, there are many organizations in our community. There is the Urban League, there is NAN, there is just people who come together and talk. There's the uh, fraternities, there's the sororities. All of these things are there giving education opportunities for people to understand. And so my position is that we all don't have to be one thing, but we have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. And there is a word that is called leadership. And for those persons who step out front, 
if they have no followers, they just taking a walk. <laughs> But if you galvanize people to believe in your issue and in your vision and your plan, they will follow. And everybody don't have to do the same thing. Right. You find where you're comfortable, where you can go. Everybody's not going to march. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not going to go to church and sing the hymns. But they should have a place in the movement. Mm -hmm. And you should let them be comfortable where they find. And so when some go to Washington in March, you stay home. But when your elected officials come home, you visit them in their office and let them know you're a voter. Tell them your address. Tell them where you live. And they then become to respect our community. When we have community groups, when we have block associations, these are all the places where you can get involved. Tenant Association. I live in Lenox Terrace. Right. We got great tenants association. In in every uh, unit, there is a captain that feeds us information. They hold meetings. So you can't say there's nothing that you can be involved in to make your community better. There's all kind of groups, if you will, associations, national, local groups that you can find a place in it for it. And the reason I like my sister that I'm sitting next to, Sister Ayosha, because she's been consistent. Right. When I met her, she said, Mama Dukes, this is what I'm doing for young people. This is what I think have to be done. It wasn't just about the children who were being shot and killed. It was about kids who not was not getting excellent education. She mm -hmm. put an education component in it. She not to put the education component in, she had to bring parents in. So she's not exclusive, she's inclusive. Right. And every time she talks about it, that's what she talks about. She said, I have my children at night. They need to see you. You need to come out. That don't mean you're marching. You go and talking to young people right. to let them know you care, that you share and you share your experience with them so they'll learn that the bats, the guns, the knives is not the way. Right. Because we've Bef suffered way more than they are suffering. Mm. Before we go on to Sister Aisha, Aisha, talk a little bit about how you got so involved in the NAACP. I mean, you're now the New York State mm -hmm. head. And on the national board. That's right. And on and the, on the executive national committee. board. And you're introducing Hillary at conventions. And you talk right, because so talk I stay consistent. From gotcha. my, at Alabama State, I joined the NAACP, right. and then, of course, I finished because my parents was here. We were in Queens. I finished my education at Adelphi University. Now, if you know Adelphi, that wasn't many people looking like me right. at Adelphi. So I went to Adelphi and organized people to be against white professors who was not cup, uh, 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 had our culture background in an all-white setting university. Mm. Uh, Greg Meeks had graduated from there, Ed Towns graduated from there. So it hadn't been many of us at that prestige university in Garden City, New York. Right. But when I got there, I meet my classmates now and said if it wasn't for me, they, they don't even know whether they would graduate because mm. I would stand up mm. wherever I have seen injustice. That's mm. right. I stand up for equality and justice, not only for African Americans, but for all Americans. I took whites under my wings who was having trouble with their professors and learned them how to speak, learned them how to go past the professor because I was an activist. Right, right. I know you didn't stop there. Right. So then I got involved in politics in Nassau County. I became vice chair of the Democratic Party under the late Jack English, who was a protege for Basil Patterson. Mm -hmm. I met Basil Patterson in Nassau County. That's how he became my surrogate father. Mm -hmm. And from that, I joined the Council of Black Elected Democrats. When David Dinkins became chair, I became secretary. Mm -hmm. That was blacks who was elected from all across New York State. And they came together as the uh, uh, New York State Black Council of Elected Democrats. But you have to be consistent. Gotcha. Nobody's doing anything that I haven't done. I've been arrested. Three mm -hmm. times, mm -hmm. Sean Bell. I go back to Yusef Hawkins. Mm -hmm. I go back to Arthur Miller. Mm -hmm. Those names are not even called anymore. Right, right. Okay? Right. But that's been the history of my involvement, consistency, mm -hmm. and following other people's leadership. That's you right. don't have to be the leader. All the time, right. 
Right. You don't have to be the leader. You don't have to be your idea. Right. You don't have to be your vision. But if it's a vision to move our community forward, especially the African-American community, then we ought to go left, stop, together. Gotcha. Aisha, talk a little bit about your background. <laughs> talk a little bit about how you got involved. And I'm sure there's some overlap in Absolutely. your thoughts uh, with Hazel. But talk a little bit about yourself and, well, and your activism. Um, I, like Miss Dukes, am from the South. Mm. But it just happens to be the South Bronx. <laughs> 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 and I, so I grew up in the southern part of the Bronx. Um, and I come from a mother who, all my life, has been an activist, whether it was coming up to our school and making sure that certain things were in place uh, for not just us, but for other children. Um, my mother was very active in welfare rights. We were on public assistance early on, and she saw a lot of the injustices and inequalities in, um, in people being on public assistance and the violations of people's uh, human rights being on public assistance. And so she would always have us uh, make the signs, we had to go and do these sit-ins and all this stuff. Like, you know, we used to talk amongst each other. I came from a family of five. And we'd say, we gotta do another sit-in. We didn't understand why my mother was always dragging us to these places, why we had to make these signs. And, you know, she would always tell me, you stand up straight. You know, we had to hold the sign and stand up straight. And she said, I don't care who comes in, you just don't move. And so. We, my family, when I say we, me and my brothers and sisters, we grew up in activism. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, too, went to a historically black college and university. I started out at Florida A&M, and I finished uh, at my alma, alma mater, Bethune-Cookman, what is known now as Bethune-Cookman University. At that time, it was Bethune-Cookman College, started by Mary McLeod Bethune mm -hmm. uh, in Daytona Beach, Florida. I just left there last weekend as well. I mm -hmm. was proud to see the uh, college has grown. So my activism... Uh, started very young mm -hmm. with my mother. I remember the March on Washington. I was there, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, a whole host of other things. I mean, folks. And so I grew up with all of these names in my household. I also grew up knowing that if you don't like something and you don't like the way that something is done or if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then you should do something about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And so um, my activism... Uh, I, for me, I didn't even know I was an activist. I have mm. to say that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until people started saying, you're an activist. I said, no, I'm not. I thought that what, what I did and what my mom did is what everybody did. Right. Because that was the world I grew up That's in. That's right. So when people started saying, you're an activist, and then they started saying, you're a leader, and I'm like, no, I'm not. But once you activate, you, be, you begin to lead in a certain sense. You have to follow leadership, but you also have to lead the people that you can bring along. Right, right. right. And so... Um, I'm really proud that a lot of my activism is around police issues and around uh, the issue of violence and education. And for me, uh, a lot of it is in interlocked, right? It's almost hand in hand, sad to say. Mm -hmm. um, and the main issue for me is dealing with issues around uh, violence and how guns come into our community and how they're so, so accessible to very young people. Attached to that is the issue of incarceration. Right. Because gun violence leads either to death or incarceration. There's almost no middle ground with it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing our young people as a result of becoming involved in uh, uh, gun violence and gangs uh, fill either the grave or the prison. Mm -hmm. So um, I take an active role in using my voice, my presence. Sometimes people say, just show up. I said, what do you want me to do? Just show up, just stand, just be with us. Mm -hmm. Because they know that that's what I represent. Not only that, um, oftentimes, you know, I'm, I'm called to speak or... Uh, to give words to young people, and that's like a constant for me. It's all day, it's every day, it's nonstop. Um, and uh, as I lead this organization, Street Corner Resources, uh, I know that I have to constantly think about how do I educate the young people so that they can join this movement against the violence. Mm -hmm. So my activism is not just me. You know, a lot of people like to say, Aisha Sekou. No, it's street corner resources and the young people that are being educated to lead, right? We have to bring the young people forth. We have to let them know that you don't have to wait to become an adult uh, or grown or finish college to lead. Young people can lead right where they are. They can, and when I say lead, lead in the activism. They can That's begin right. to put themselves in an active role. I always like to talk about what our young people can do. Mm -hmm. And what they can do is if you don't like what's happening in your school, 
And I hear young people complain about that all the time. They say, well, there's far too much violence going on in the schools. Uh, some of it is allowed and never reported, Miss Aisha. Um, we don't really have a chance to have uh, a full class because people are fighting and bullying and acting out, and most of the teacher's time is spent with discipline. Then I said, you know what? Then you need to call a meeting with the principal mm -hmm. and ask that some order be brought to your school. And it right. doesn't mean that po more police in school. It means that those problems that are causing or allowing the violence have to be fixed. So our young people, I'm saying that to say yeah. that within our, our community and our education system, young people can activate their voices. Right. They can use uh, their presence. You know, we do uh, something called a lion, and we've been in Harlem uh, doing lions since around 2008. Uh, I think we did the first one with gangbangers. Right. And these are guys who were uh, former shooters, gangbangers, jumping people, uh, creating havoc in the community, and they said, we want to make things different. And so they uh, joined me in a, li a lion where we laid down on 129th Street and Lenox Avenue, right in front of Jacob's Restaurant. Actually, they let us use their electricity for the microphone. We had young people come from Eagle Academy, all the surrounding high schools, FDA and others, and we called for peace in that area because right. there had been so many shootings. And I bring that and raise that because people say, well, you know, what about education? All of these things and all of these young people who activated came from a school. And this was part of their education process. The teachers who brought them, the principals who allowed the, the field trip to happen, uh, allowed these young people to use an active voice to call for peace. And so when I think about ordering the steps of young people, that uh, they can come and meet us on what we call the Occupy. We have something called Occupy the Corners. Mm -hmm. We'll be out actually tonight. We're out. Oh, okay. Um, Where are you going to be? We'll be on 139th and 140th and Lenox Avenue, right mm -hmm. in front of... Uh, uh, I think it's uh, Fred Samuel's Park, because right, the name right, of the right, park. Right. And what we know about that park is on both sides of that park, 139th yeah. and 140th between 7th and Lenox, that the majority of the shootings in Manhattan have happened on the sides of those parks. Okay, now, okay. there's That's the right. park is in the center on both sides of the street. The shootings have happened over the last three years in almost the exact same places. Mm -hmm. right. So we saw about, we were 120 days, and when I say we, Street Corner Resources is the, um, uh, the recipient of the Cure Violence contract for West Harlem, so Got we're it. really proud of that, which means that we have the job, sometimes very difficult, to uh, keep the shootings down and de-escalate the violence and mm -hmm. keep the tension down, right, and break that up. So we were proud that we had 120 days with no shootings until we had a shooting about two weeks ago on 139th mm -hmm. Street, and it was kind of a retaliation, That's revenge right. kind of shooting. So uh, we're 28 days in now. Well, I think it's about 28 days ago that shooting happened. So we're 28 days uh, with no shooting, and we'll be out there this Friday, and we have a whole street team, Street Corner Resources. It's mm -hmm. called Speak Peace Forward mm -hmm. uh, is the name of the team that's part of the Cure Violence contract, and they're young men who have been involved uh, in their past in negative, violent behavior. Right. And they are very adamant about giving back and helping to restore the community to peace. And I have to say, my Dukes has been out there right. on the corners right. with right. us, occupying, being See, there well, with them. Let me ask you all a question, mm -hmm. because one of the things I feel is that I feel like back in the day, Montgomery bus boycott, you know, I feel, I feel like activism worked back in the day, and I, and I get... And it, and you f get the feeling that it's like we're, we're it's like the celebrity activist universe we live in now, where it's social media and oh, absolutely. everyone's absolutely and everyone's the I world, right? Yeah, but, I, you, I, but you have to talk a little bit but about. But you have to hear what she said. What she said about the young people, the young people who are in the street speak, are people who was the behavior that was happening in our community, and so she have learned them. You now have to be a part of making our community whole. Turn it we around. must have That's to right. stop the violence. So you go and get the links who I'm in. We go to high schools to get young men. Right. So we work with schools in the area at Harlem Hospital. Mm. We bring the young men in once a month with the alphas. We have the brothers mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Good program. Good program mm. that we've done. We are in our 16th year. And I'm proud to tell you, we have sent 300 young men through college. Right. The links. There are many things 
that our community can do to assist us. But the consistency, you can't say, I'm not going to do this anymore. If you really believe in it, you have to do it and see it through. I love That's that. That's right. What all you the said. way to the end. All the way to, to the, the end. finish line. line. Let you me ask you all a controversial question. So... <laughs> But the police brutality that's going on, mm -hmm. there are those who are saying all that we're seeing is marches. And people are spending more but time marching than doing... That's not true. Well, that's not true. Then, when then they say all that they're seeing, we have to look at where are they looking. Right. Right? So okay. if you're only watching TV. the movement on television, right. if, if that's what you're doing, it means you're not out in anything. Right? <laughs> so so if, all, if that is all that you're seeing, then you have to look somewhere else. Right. So it means look in, in, in the churches and the mosques and the synagogues and, and the kingdom halls because things are happening there. People Absolutely. are writing petitions. They're going to Washington and uh, Albany and they're using their voices there. Um, I've seen a good number of people passing out information, showing up at their precincts. Absolutely. There were uh, a group of folks out in front of precincts just having a presence saying we don't want to see this in our right. community, in our neighborhood, and not just here in New York, but um, all across the country. Across the country the people are just of... showing up and, and, and giving a present. The media does not pay attention to the real work that's happening in the community. Is that what you're saying? That, that as well. So there, the media is focusing on what can sell advertisement. We have right. to remember television, exactly. the way that it's supported, is th the way that it makes its money is through advertisement. So that thing that appears to be the most exciting, has the most people, creates the most like wow, then that means people are watching, that means you can sell advertisement. So we have to be careful. Gotcha. We can't let uh, the media the direct dictate, right. and dictate what our activism is, what, how our voices are shaped, right? And we also, one of the things I wanted to say about the marching, I just want to go back to that. Some young people were calling me, mm -hmm. and they always do about different things. So they call me and they say, Sister Aisha, we're out marching. So I thought the same thing, you know. I said, let me, I said, well, where are you? And they said, well, oh, everybody's here. So-and-so is here, so-and-so. I said, okay, and I know all the so-and-so. So <laughs> I know how they can get. Right, right. So I was dog tired. It was about 11 o'clock at night. They were coming up Lenox Avenue. They were marching yeah. with, you know, different groups of folks were joining the march, and some I agree with and some, you know, I'm a little careful about. <laughs> and I said, you know what, let me put my jeans back on. Let me put my sneakers on because sometimes if that's what they choose to do. Right. You got to be there with them. And you can't say don't, that's right, right. cuz some are just right. going to jump out right. there, right? Anyway, right. my 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 feeling was get out there with them. So mm -hmm. be some and right. I jumped out there and I just gave them their marching orders. I said, we are not marching. Trying to well, mainly not trying to get arrested. Right. I knew that they were only marching to the bridge. Right. I had them with me. Most of those officers I know. Right. And I kept them with me because mm -hmm. I knew that they felt like they needed to be in something. something. Right. right. And I knew I had to help to direct what right. that something was. was right. And if it got real crazy, I just gather up mine right, right, and right, get right, them right. to and some say safety. They happened right. with Chanel and mm -hmm. Jeff, even, right. who happened to be, we were at a meeting, by the way. We didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. When we walked from you, you didn't come with us. Oh, yeah. We saw mm -hmm. the helmet. They had got to the state office building. That's right. They were there in their ride they had gills. The motorcycles, Sackles the batons, and the ride gills everything. and everything. She, by the time I got in the house, Chanel called me and said, Mama Dukes, we are here. We stopping them, we telling them that we have not given any orders to go to the bridge tonight. Exactly. Got and it. they cannot go by themselves. And so they warded off that group while Sister Aisha went and got the other group. But Jeff also knew the community relation post. That's right. That they it's had stood up there. It's important to have those Absolutely. relationships Absolutely. as well with right. the... Um, right. So we have brought mm -hmm. them... When he first came in office. ...into our mm -hmm. community. When we changed our commanding officers... That's right. We were invited to meet the commanding officers that mm -hmm. we had. We was invited to meet with the community relation people when they was making and the switch. And that's so important. So that's important. That's so important. Because as I mm -hmm. told you earlier, they have to know, Sister Aisha, that she's not one of the ones causing it, she's the one diffusing. That's right. Exactly. To stop. Let me ask so, you a question. So they have to understand and learn the respect of right. us who are in leadership. Absolutely. That's right. That they come and talk to us. Right. And I think that right. that's a great point. You know, oftentimes we, uh, we sometimes criminalize each other right. in our own work that's right. because we don't know each other, we right. don't know right, what right, each right. one does, and it's like, oh, that's just Aisha and those bad behind kids. Right. No. Right. Look at what the young people are doing. We have young people at Harlem Renaissance High School. Right. Our council member, Inez Dickens, has um, 
uh, allocated funds uh, of $600,000, her and Gail Brewer, who's our Manhattan Borough President, to create a music studio where young people are creating positive music. Let me and, ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. we haven't talked about it the whole time. Just really quickly, what are your thoughts, any critiques, mm. any suggestions, real quickly? I know them. Mm -hmm. I know many of the Black Lives Matter. I know the justice. Are they working? Is it working? Is Black Lives Matter working? They work when you get them in a room. What I find, there is no leader mm. that you can pull into mm -hmm. the room That's right. and have a conversation with. We tried to find the, the Congressional Black Caucus last year, tried to find the mm -hmm. leadership. They got people, but they each said, we are not leaders, we are in the movement. Mm. Now, you can't have a leaderless movement. Movement, And I think that there goes the problem. So right. mm. when we talk about Black Lives Matter, I mean, I, I love the activism that I see right. from them. It's so powerful and, and they're so them. passionate. And I've been with and them. And I stand with them. Right. Definitely. But when you start, uh, when you start to look at the way that the movement is being, um, the fiber of the movement is being torn apart by others, it's because the leader has not appeared, mm. right? And right. so the leader keeps the ranks tight. Right. And I think what has happened is the ranks have become somewhat splintered, not totally, but I think that they would benefit from having recognizable leaders, whether it's in each state mm -hmm. or what have you, to, to pull the movement back in. Gotcha. Pull it in, make it tight, make the ranks tight, and keep that passion, keep that activism going, stay in the forefront because it's working, Absolutely. but it can work even better and can be a stronger movement if it has leadership. Any last And recognizes the leadership that exists that came before, before them. them. That's before major. Them. Before them. The wisdom. That's right. The wisdom. Right. That's right. 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 Mm -hmm. Any last comments? Well, my comment is that I think we are moving in the right direction. I'm pleased to tell you that uh, we work together. That's right. Uh, Reverend Williams, whenever he pick up the phone and call me, Jackie Roe Adams. That's right. We, uh, we know each other. We trust each other. That's mm -hmm. right. We respect each other. That's right. We respect each other that's in right. our and that's own major. right. And that's major. That when you get, and that, that gives our young people a, 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 a clear direction too, that they, they've been there. They know what they're saying. And they are on the same page. Mm -hmm. They're singing from the same hymn book that we are here for you. We're going to protect that's you. That's right. We're going to be there for you. We're going to be beside you. You lead. And we're going to watch them and learn. We're and we're going to help them, them, them learn. learn. We're going to guide right. all and of guide that. them all of that. And so, but what I like about a Sister Aisha and the resource, I've been there. She, she invited That's me right. to come. And I love I've it. seen that it's not just about one thing. It's the whole thing, all of the ills that raise up to the point of such frustration that our kids will pick up the gun That's right. and shoot each other. But she's teaching them to love each other. She's teaching them that there's a better way by offering the music, mm -hmm. by seeing that uh, the schools, are, we are having the best Up resources that's right. for our school. So we have to be in all of it. You just can't take one piece of it. Perfect. Well, that's all the time we have. <laughs> Jesus, thank you for Lord, having us. You. Thank you for oh, supporting. I want to thank my guests, uh, Hazel Dukes and Aisha Seku for being here with me. I'm Brian Benjamin. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Represent NYC on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Thank you both so much. Thanks for having, for having us. All right. Thank you.